Bip. What is up ninjas? My name is Simrold and today I'm going to teach you guys how Martin Garrix creates his melodies. Now, this video is only possible thanks to the homie Dave Rock, uh, I'm gonna, at various points, we'll see you guys. So Martin Garrix had a master class at a dance music convention and this guy Dave Brook recorded all of it. So we got to give thanks to his beautiful hands for holding up the camera and recording the whole damn master class because as you watch the master class, there's a portion where Martin Garrix improvises a melody live for the audience. You can see he's a bit nervous, but he actually makes something that is pretty good. what's going on in your head when you're when you're kind of building a melody. No, no, no. I think everyone enjoyed watching you just do your thing and then see you go. <laughs> So in this video guys, we're gonna explain how he makes those melodies by looking at what he did in that video and explaining his workflow and what happened in that melody. Now, I don't know if this is how Martin creates his melodies every single time guys, but we can for sure use it to learn a little bit from him, to learn a little bit about his workflow process when it comes to creating a melody. So that's what we're gonna be doing in today's video. I thought the melody he created was pretty dope, but if you read the comments on some of the videos on YouTube that have the similar thing, the melody part, there's people bashing on him and stuff like that and I, I don't get it. But at the end of the day, guys, if it sounds good, if there's people that love it, that's all that should matter. As always, guys, if you want to support this channel, make sure to check out evilsounds.com for some dope sounds that I've created. That's the best way to support me, and in return, you get something in return. And with that being said, let's get straight into this tutorial. So here we are inside of Ableton with the Martin Garrix melody that he did in that video. So what we're going to do is hear this melody out. Then we're going to make our own melody uh, using what we found out about this melody. Okay, so this is how the melody sounded like. All right, so hearing that melody, the first thing that I notice a lot is that Martin Garrix is going with a very safe melody and a very safe chord progression. The first thing is that he's utilizing a lot of lead voicing, and lead voicing, all that means is that as we switch between these notes, you can see that they kind of overlap. And again, I'm making the chords be full triads because he opts to get rid of the third in most of the chords. But as you can see here, all these notes, you have a bit of lead voicing. These notes, dun, dun, dun. there's very huge similarities in what he's doing here. You can see that there, and then we go here. And this is the only note here that is not going to be lead voiced. Okay, so as you can see, this is all very safe. Lead voicing is a great way to kind of have smooth transitions when it comes to chords. But the problem with it is that it just makes your chords very predictable. So if you want to utilize this when you're doing chords, all you really have to do is be like, all right, I have that C minor chord. What, what chord can I go to which sounds clean? Well, you can go to the D sharp chord, the G chord, and the scale of C minor. You can even go down to chords that contain that C or that D sharp here. From here, I can go down to maybe that F because again, you know, it's gonna contain notes from there. So you can see. So we can get rid of that middle note that Martin had here. And again, just showing you guys what I mean by it being very safe. And, and, you know, that's a surefire way of getting chords that actually work. But again, keep in mind, you will get blasted by music theory snobs sometimes. Like, oh, that's too predictable, too stable. That's what they're pretty much telling you. Uh, but let's go back to what he had. Okay, so that's going to be what I mean by a very easy chord progression, which we're going to do as well to kind of imitate what he did and learn from how he made his melody. Next thing is when the melody starts and usually the note hits right when the chord changes, uh, he offers very stable notes. Now, what that means is that when we do a chord change or when we have a melody playing and it's stable, that means the notes in the melody are part of the chord, which is a way of creating a melody as well. Again, very predictable, but nothing wrong with it. A lot of dance music melodies are going to be that way. So here we play a G, very stable again because we have that G there. And then he goes down to that C. Now, Martin Garrix likes to use a lot of transitional notes as well. That And all these notes are going to do, the purpose of them is to set you up for the next part of the main part of the melody. So these notes are transitional. Like, you don't really need them, but they add, they, add, they help guide, you know, the melody, and it helps set us up. Like, we could have easily done multiple different things. As you can see, that sounds good too. We could have gone C to F or F, you know, D to F here. Which is what he did. We could have even done maybe like a, a, a G to uh We can do, we could have done this. So there's various variations you can do, but the, all those notes are doing are setting, it's setting us up for 
the next phase of the melody, the next ass whooping our ears are going to get because this melody is really good. So as we move along, again, no change again, very stable. We have that G there. Okay, so G, we have a C that's not stable. This, I don't believe that note's, yeah, it's not stable, but it works. And then we go back to being stable when he changes the chord here. We have that A sharp now, which is part of that chord, but he chooses to take off the seventh and switch to, you know, the third here of the chord. And then transition the notes. Again, we switch and very stable melody, G sharp, G sharp, C. Similar to this over here, except when we are here, if we want to be stable, we can only choose these notes. Okay, so again, keeping it very simple with this kind of deciphering his melody so that we can make our own version. Again, here we switch again, G sharp, D sharp, D sharp there. Very stable. Again, notes that belong to this chord. And then we, got, we have a change to F and we switch to a chord that has the F in it. Very stable. Here we have that D. And then D, 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 and then sets it up for the loop again. All right, so that ending there, we could have ended the melody here with just a C. And that would have been it, but he loops it, so he goes to A sharp so that it can loop back again. All right, so that's going to be a simple decipher of it. We have a rhythm that is also very similar throughout the whole song, um, throughout the whole melody. So knowing that, let's make our own melody. All right, guys, so now that we know a little bit about Martin Garrix's improvisation there, we can do our own improvisation. So what I'm going to do is start again like he did. We're going to use the C minor chord as well, and we're going to go here with the C and G. So that's what we're going to do there, and we're going to go here. So we're going to do something very similar that he did there. So again, I'm going to start it at G as well. We're gonna... And then we're just going to get that chord, uh, that rhythm going that he has. And it's very important. Rhythm, I believe, is 90% of a melody. And then notes are going to make up the rest. They're equally as important if you think about it. But again, rhythm, very important. It can break or break a melody when it comes in terms to catching it. I'm going to do... So we're going to do maybe something like, not like he did because then it's going to sound too similar, but we'll go maybe uh, D sharp or C. Being very stable, maybe. And then here we're going to have transitional notes. And from there, those transitional notes are going to help us pick a chord. So maybe we can go dun, dun, dun. I think that sounds really good. Dun, dun, dun. All right, so from here, I need to pick a, a chord that's going to hit with that G there. So easily, I can be like, all right, let's see. We have this one's chord. Nope. Um, so maybe we can go up by one, or maybe we can go to a G sharp chord. There we go. That's a lot better. Dun, dun, dun. Now here I'm going to switch this D sharp down to C because again, remember, um, he does that change there. So if we have the G sharp chord here, he gets rid of the triad there, but then he brings it down there. So that can also work for us. And then from here, we're going to set ourselves up. Dun -dun, maybe dun -dun. I think I want to repeat this transitional note because it sounds so catchy. try maybe that sounds good too <laughs> oh, man. We're good. and then I kind of want to repeat this again because it sounds so catchy dun 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 yeah, that's the, the ending of the, of the Martin Garrix melody. But you can see we're kind of using what he's doing as well. We can even Here we need another chord that hits that G sharp, or we can use the same chord if we want. Uh, however, let's see, we can go with maybe an F chord, a low F there. And again, I'm picking that because 
the triad of the F uh, chord here that we're doing, the F minor chord, has that G sharp in it. We're just not using it in our version. And then we can go back down here similar to the way he has it except we're using this repetitive in this part here because that's the catchy part and we got to exploit it as much as we can there we go that note right there so here we can go to a note that has that d in it so i think uh the g might have it yeah this can be the Has that repetitiveness again dun, dun, dun. back again there so that kind of works there let's put this up an octave so as you can see we use what martin garrix has in his video to make similar melodies like he did it in that video on how to make versions like martin garrix so keep it keep it basic as you can see again we are using a lot of lead voicing here because we have notes that are very similar in the chords keeping it safe but that's the that's the style he has um if we study his music he probably doesn't do it all the time maybe he does it here and there but it's a good way to again learn how to make melodies and kind of get a knack for it guys knowing these things definitely helps a lot but it's not needed if you don't know it you eventually just stumble upon this like oh this always sounds good i'm always gonna do that and that again keep in mind that the more you do it sometimes you can get trapped in this formulaic pattern that you can't get out of and you always feel like you're making the same chord progression and the same melody so you gotta be really careful with this knowledge it's very powerful it can get addicting just like cocaine or like any other drug so again you know do it but have fun with it and and try and like break the rules here and there when you're making melodies because again you can do so much with this even start from here and not even use the the stable notes and you can still get good melodies Okay, but you guys have a good one. I hope this tutorial helps some of you guys out in making melodies. And that has been how to make melodies like Martin Garrix's 8 2017 master class. But what you talking about?